next on the list is Wham Cloud. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Reed from Wham Cloud. Robert Reed from WAMCloud, and uh, today I'm here to show you our spring collection. <laughs> we have an enhanced palette this year, <coughs> and uh, I think purple jackets are going to be coming back. So, in addition to t-shirts, we have a couple of other lines of business, and uh, you may have heard of us in, in the Lustre group. We, we do uh, a lot of Lustre support, we do a lot of core development, and uh, also uh, work on the releases. But we also want to do more. And uh, we've, we've worked with our partners and uh, talked with them. And we see that uh, they're getting a lot of feedback from their customers that they want Lustre to be turnkey. They want an appliance. And we see the partners you know, going down the road of building appliances. They're taking Lustre packages, you know, RPMs from WAM Cloud, and a Linux distribution, and some other tools, and combining it, and adding some scripts and some glue. And that's an appliance. And we see this happening repetitively in different partners' environments. And you know, we're saying, stepping back, this is silly, let's do this. So we're going to build, or we have built, a, uh, a Luster OS, a Luster appliance distribution with Luster packages and scripts and some glue, and uh, our own management tools which manage this appliance. So we can give that to the, the, to the partners to make Luster easier to, to build, turn into appliance and sell it. And they can add their special sauce on top of our appliance, they, and we've got hooks, they can put some customizations into the management tools, and uh, they can sell that. Now, if it's not going to be successful if the users get it and it's still the same old luster to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, of course, we need to add management tools. And we spent a lot of time this year adding a management tool to this appliance. Uh, and it's a very, it's got some deep luster knowledge in the tool itself. And it can manage and, and monitor luster file system. And finally, we need to think about what it takes to support this environment. And a lot of the first two bullet points, it really aids support because it makes it consistent. It's a consistent version of Luster, Linux environment that it's running in, the tools that are added, how it's configured by the config tools is consistent for a particular vendor's platform. That greatly aids support because a lot of uncertainties are, are known and we can get straight to the problem and not have to deal with, okay, which version of Luster, which patch, which, how'd you configure it, and so on. All right, so this is a marketing slide, sorry. What, what I'd like to say here, though, is that uh, although Chroma, which is our, the, our management infrastructure and, and kind of the overall name here, Chroma is, it has a GUI. The GUI itself is actually less than 25% of the code of the whole product. Most of, of the work we've done in the product is in the, the management server, the Chroma server that the GUI is talking to. That's, that's where the brains are for this. And it is a you know, deep understanding of all the dependencies, of all the luster resources that, that are in the file system. It's associated with the hardware that we get, the information that we get from the, the vendor when they add their customization. We uh, have deep knowledge of, of the hardware itself that Lustre is running on. We can tie issues uh, with, with the hardware. And so, for example, when we're creating the file system to begin with, when the customer says, you know, I'd like this LUN to be an OST, the information we get from the vendor says, well, this LUN is actually accessible from two different servers, and uh, this connection has got a higher weight than that one, so server A is going to be the primary for the failover pair and server B will be the secondary. The customer or the user setting up the file system says, I want that LUN to be a target. Chroma, when it formats it, says, all right, that's a target and it's a failover target and that's configured automatically the failover between these two servers. And, th and it's all taken care of uh, in internally in Chroma. Another example of that integration is uh, if a disk, we get a, a fault on a spindle that we get that information through the, the vendor plug-in, then we say, well, this spindle is part of this LUN, this LUN is a target, and this file system is now degraded. And so we can put a you know, little red light on the window saying this file system has a problem, and admin can drill that down and, and see uh, what the actual problem is on, on the disk. So in addition to the, the GUI, which is a browser-based interface, um, there's also a command line. And both the, the, in the GUI and the command line are accessing the Chroma server through a RESTful API. So all the functionality that's available through the GUI and the CLI is accessible through the REST API. And what it means is that if, if uh, say, Nagios is, is the, uh, your favorite way of getting woken up at night, you, you can write a Python script to uh, 
the query that, or whatever you'd like to use, the query that the REST API to get the status of whatever resources you care about and feed that back into Nagios and, and it will uh, t track that for you. So we've, so in terms of building a product, we've taken the Chroma Manager, the GUI, the, the server and, and the brains and combine that with the Chroma Storage, which is what we're calling that, uh, that appliance kit that you install on the Lustre servers to create a Lustre appliance. And bundle these together, and this is what we're calling Chroma Enterprise 1.0. It's the first version, of course. A and uh, we're in a limited beta now. We actually have a beta customer, one who installed it and had some success. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Indiana. Uh, and uh, we're working through our vendors to, you know, Get to qualify a few more beta beta customers, and we're charting the release of our software on on June thirtieth. And uh, the first vendor that's announced that they'll be shipping something with Chroma is DDN. Happy to say, and they, uh, yeah, I don't know when they're shipping. That's their own deadline. But our software is ready June thirtieth, and the other partners and, and vendors will will go from there. So I do have a couple of screenshots, obligatory, but uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you.